JBN, we keep you informed. I am Michelle Jones, and in the news, cash seized in St. James, less than five million U.S. dollars, say police. Police say cash seized at a house in St. James on Tuesday amounted to just over 3.8 million U.S. dollars, or 551 million Jamaican dollars, and 30,000 Canadian dollars, or 3,336,000 Jamaican dollars, less than the U.S. $5 million previously reported. Up until Thursday, officers were still counting the international currency, which was seized in a pre-dawn operation in Coral Gardens that was led by the Narcotics Division and supported by the Joint Anti-Gang Task Force and the Divisional Police. During the operation, the police said a vehicle was intercepted and upon search, cocaine weighing approximately 11 kilograms with a street value of $88 million was found. As part of the operation, a premises was also searched. A 46-year-old businessman and one other individual was taken into custody following the drug seizure. Their identities are being withheld pending further investigations. The police say a high-level probe is now underway. Finn and Kirk charged for shooting five people in Denham Town. Police have charged a man in connection with last month's shooting of five people in Denham Town, Kingston. Tafara Anderson, otherwise called Finn and Kirk, has been charged with shooting with intent. Anderson was charged after he turned himself into the police shortly after the shooting. He was among several men named as persons of interest in connection with the incident. Police said two other men are being sought for the shooting. They are known by their aliases, Kyle and Rico. These men are being asked to turn themselves into the police. It was reported that on March 19, 2022, the five people were among several others conversing on Market Street when they were pounced upon by a group of men armed with handguns. The men opened fire at them and the group. Several of them ran into the Denham Town Police Station. The injured people were assisted to the Kingston Public Hospital by the police. Police said none of the injuries were life-threatening. Five people arrested in connection with gun find in rural Jamaica. As police continue their clampdown on illegal weapons, two 9mm pistols and 13 rounds of ammunition have been seized by lawmen in targeted operations in two separate incidents in St. Thomas and Westmoreland on Thursday, April 28. An operation carried out by detectives in 11 miles, Bull Bay, St. Thomas, accounted for the siege of one 9mm pistol containing 10 rounds of ammunition. The operation occurred between the hours of 6 a.m. and 7 a.m. One man was arrested in connection with the find. In another operation in White House District, Westmoreland, a Taurus Thunder 9mm pistol and three rounds of ammunition were seized by members of the Jamaica Constabulary Force. Four people were taken into custody in connection with that seizure. Lawmen have since renewed calls for members of the public to report illegal weapons by calling Crime Stopper 311 Police 119 emergency number or their nearest police station. Three people facing firearm charges in Clarendon. The Clarendon police have arrested and charged three people with illegal possession of firearm and ammunition following an incident on Windsor Avenue, Maypen in the parish on Sunday, April 24. Charged are 29 year old Ron Peter, delivery man of friendship clothes, Red Pond, 35 year old Vernal Dixon, a security guard of Waterloo District, Spanish Town, St. Catherine and 30-year-old Seneca Wallen, a vendor of Spanish Town Road, Kingston 13. Reports are that about 4.20 p.m., lawmen in the area on their saw Nissan Central motor car with the three people aboard parked along the roadway. They were accosted, searched, and one 9mm pistol with a magazine containing 10 9mm rounds of ammunition was found in their possession. They were subsequently taken into custody and charged. Chuck Quick to sign extradition orders for scammers. Minister of Justice Delroy Truck says he is swift in signing off on requests from the United States for the extradition of scammers once the requests are on good grounds. At the same time, Chuck noted that several scammers waived their rights to extradition hearing in Jamaica and consent to proceed directly to the United States under the terms of the extradition laws and treaty between Jamaica and the U.S. The government of Jamaica is working very closely with U.S. authorities to weed out the scammers, and I can tell you, as soon as an extradition for a scammer reaches my desk, within a matter of hours I glance through. Most of them consent, but if they don't consent and I see good grounds, I sign without any problem, in a matter of hours, Chuck said. He was speaking on Tuesday, the second day of the two-day child abuse guidelines training seminar for the Jamaica Constabulary Force and the Justices of the Peace, organized and facilitated by the Office of the Children's Advocate at the Royalton Lugs Resort in Trelawney. Earlier this month, 
speaking at the Montego Bay Chamber of Commerce and Industries two-day security summit held at the Montego Bay Convention Center. Dominic Riley, the country attache, U.S. Postal Service, U.S. Embassy, warned that a number of Jamaican lottery scammers will be extradited to the United States this year. Riley did not indicate the number of scammers will be extradited, but noted that there are several in the pipeline. With the way that the extradition laws changed in the summer of last year, in August 2021, extraditions will be picking up. You will see a lot more extraditions coming in the future, Riley declared. $5.8 million for micro and small businesses in August Town. A total of 44 micro and small enterprises in August Town, St. Andrew, have been awarded grant support valued at $5.8 million under the government's Integrated Community Development Project Tool. The project has been implemented by the Jamaica Social Investment Fund, JSEF. Presentation of the award was made Thursday at the Haven of Hope Open Bible Church in the community, where some of the beneficiaries displayed their creations and received much encouragement. Minister of Education and Member of Parliament for St. Andrew Eastern, Favel Williams, lauded the importance of small businesses to community development. These small enterprises have been the seedbed for new ideas and the testing ground for new ways of working. They often lead the way for new products on the market and new services help to foster local economies, Williams said. She encouraged entrepreneurs to get formalized so that they can take their businesses to the next level. She highlighted that Jamaica's unemployment rate has dropped to 6.2% and the project will further contribute to economic growth and community development through income generation and job creation. She urged community members to encourage these local businesses by offering them the support needed to sustain their operations. Managing Director of JSAFE, Omar Sweeney, noted that in the first cycle of the ICDP2, approximately $3 million was invested to support 24 micro and small entrepreneurs. With the 44 persons added on Thursday, a total of 68 enterprises have benefited from the program. Sweeney said more than 300 applications were received. We want to create the type of community that every Jamaican deserves to live in, a community that is safe, said Sweeney. He said further that the impact and the intervention that has been made is to ensure that no community is left behind. Sweeney acknowledged the ministries and organizations that partnered with JCF to offer additional support to the beneficiaries. Among them are the August Town Community Development Committee, the Ministry of National Security, the JPS Foundation, the Bureau of Standards Jamaica, the National Housing Trust, and the Company's Office of Jamaica. These partners will be on hand to provide the necessary business support that the beneficiaries might need to sustain their business ventures, Sweeney said. Jamaica reports 160 new COVID-19 cases, 7 deaths. Jamaica reported 160 new cases of COVID-19 and 7 fatalities on Thursday, according to the latest statistics from the Ministry of Health and Wellness. This pushed the total number of cases of the virus since the start of the pandemic to 129,978 and the death toll to 2,962. Of the newly reported cases, there were 68 females and 48 males with ages ranging from 25 days to 82 years. The cases were recorded in St. Anne, 33, Kingston and St. Andrew, 26, St. James, 26, Westmoreland, 8, St. Catherine, 8, Manchester, 5, Trelawney, 4, Clarendon, 3 and Hanover, 3. Meanwhile, the latest deaths are a 62-year-old male from St. James, whose death was previously reported on the investigation, an 80-year-old female from Kingston and St. Andrew, whose death was previously reported on the investigation, a 63-year-old male from Westmoreland, an 82-year-old female from Kingston and St. Andrew, whose death was previously reported on the investigation, an 87-year-old male, a 55-year-old male, and an 85-year-old male from St. James. Four of the latest deaths were recorded in September 2021, and the other four were recorded in January 2022. Another death was reported as coincidental. The country also recorded 102 new recoveries, bringing the total number of recoveries to 83,358. The positivity rate for the latest round of testing was 16%. There are 19 people hospitalized, two of them critically ill. There are 739 confirmed active cases on the island. JBN, we keep you informed. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, leave us a comment and click the notification bell to receive our daily news items.